Welcome, we are Team Heath Solutions, and today we'll present a change management strategy for the American Institute of Radiologic Pathology. Presenting today, we have Carla Brathwaite, our training and development strategist, Paul Chance, our data analyst, and myself, Chocho Ishun, for organizational strategists. And combined, we have a total of over 25 years experience in organizational change. Our change strategy executive summary. Through our research, we've identified AIRP instructors as the group whom is most resistant to change. And the AIRP staff and external radiologic program directors as ardent supporters of our proposed change. And identified organizational risk in regards to AIRP staff workloads and cultural risks between AIRP faculties and attendees. Our consulting firm has developed a five-part program to mitigate the risk and ensure adoption success by ARRP faculty, leadership, and staff. These strategies will focus on developing strong coalition of change, consistent communication, formalized training, and providing enabling tools. Our diffusion strategy will match corporate communications with various stakeholders within the organization based on their level of enthusiasm for the organizational change. The ultimate goal will be to bridge the adoption chasm and gain widespread support. A key part of our change management strategy is through strong and consistent communication. However, not all methods of communication is appropriate for all stakeholders. Our strategy works to match the right methods and information with the appropriate groups. Finally, we'll discuss what other support and approval we'll need for ACR before final implementation can begin. And now I'll let Carla discuss stakeholder analysis. Thank you, Cho. This map gives an overview of the key stakeholders of the ARP course redesign. In the stakeholder analysis, we've determined how the course revamp will affect each of the stakeholders, particularly the faculty and staff of the AIRP. The course redesign will directly affect the way in which the faculty designs the curriculum and will greatly impact the workflow for staff. Now that I've given you a, a general overview of the stakeholder map, Carl is um, going to talk about organizational readiness. Thank you, Carla. <clears throat> in our research, we assessed three main areas of organizational readiness. First was to identify the groups that were the most resistant. In our analysis, we concluded that the ARP faculty and ARP leadership are the most resistant to change. Our mitigation strategy is to make small changes quickly rather than one large change. While we'll also communicates consistently about the changes, highlighting accomplishments, and providing stories of success. Early on, we will engage ARP leadership in an effort to transition them from the resistant to an enthusiastic supporter of this change. The second group we identified were the groups that were the most enthusiastic. In our analysis, we concluded that the ARP staff, attendees, and the external radiology, radiology program directors would get the most benefit out of these changes. They have also in the past expressed interest in ARP making these changes. As with the most resistant, communicating successes and next steps will ensure continued motivation for this change. Finally, we looked at a broader organizational readiness issues and identified two main areas, capacity risk and cultural risks. The Wheel of Woe is a diagram developed by Deloitte Consulting to highlight the 12 most common problem areas that organizations deal with. ARP's key problem areas are ARP staff workloads and cultural risks associated with the ARP leadership, faculty, and visiting instructors. To address risks associated with the ARP staff workloads, our firm will first isolate what activities can be eliminated or reduced. As the program will require ARP staff to assist faculty and visiting instructors in transitioning their current lectures to the new learning curriculum, this will reduce the amount of other work, uh, reducing the amount of other work will be vital. We will also take a deeper look at the proposed changes to ARP activities to ensure that these changes won't cause unexpected increases in ARP effort. To address the second major organizational risk, 
our firm will attempt to address the cultural gap between boomer instructors and millennial attendees. Working with ARP faculty and leadership, our firm will help these most resistant groups transition through their fears and cultural issues. Our strategy will reframe the faculty's beliefs, uh, which will be further discussed in the adoption strategy. Our adoption strategy has five major elements. First is to create a strong coalition of change. The ACR leadership will help communicate the change from the top, while course managers, attendees, and staff will help support the change from the bottom up. The ARP staff is also the largest portion of the ARP organization, so getting them on board early will make it easier to keep the change momentum going. Communication of the change will be consistent and often. There will be communications with the Change Coalition first, establishing roles and responsibilities, followed by stakeholder communications and a pre-launch teaser to inform ARP and outside stakeholders of the upcoming changes. This strategy will be discussed in detail later in our presentation. To fully embrace the blended learning training program, training of the faculty will be vital. First, instructors will be exposed to a blended uh, to exposed to blended learning as learners, which will put them into the seats of the attendees. In this first experience, instructors will be able to choose what learning methods they find most effective. This two-day training process will focus on learning design and on the details of each style of learning. The departments will be broken out with faculty developing their fast pitch uh, for blended learning prototypes. The Change Coalition will be important here to keep the teams focused on creating meaningful prototypes for each section of the ARP course. Once instructors have had hands-on training with blended learning, a tiered tech training uh, will occur over a six to seven week period. Each hour-long course will train ARP faculty and staff on elements of the online learning portal and other tech tools that will assist them in their training. To assist course managers and ARP faculty, IT support, templates, and examples of effective learning strategies will be provided. As the course progress, past presentations will populate the templates and past lectures will be used as examples. Finally, change metrics will be installed to track the effectiveness of the blended learning transition. Organizationally, we'll be tracking performance improvements, adherence to the project plan, and benefit realization. At the individual level, we'll track adoption metrics, utilization reports, and satisfaction survey results. Finally, we'll be tracking attendee satisfaction through exit interviews and questionnaires to find out what works and what still needs to be changed. All metrics will be clearly communicated and made available to ARP staff and faculty so that they can see the benefits of the change, reinforcing that the change is working. Now that we've covered the organizational readiness and adoption strategies, Carla will, be, will discuss our diffusion strategy. Our proposed diffusion strategy contains several approaches that we believe will promote active involvement from the internal stakeholders throughout the implementation of the ARP hybrid course. Now for our sponsors, we're, we recommend that there are monthly updates and quarterly meetings. We also recommend that the ACR board provides direct communication to ARP staff and faculty about the change. Creating a vision and communicating the vision of revamping the course gives all key stakeholders a clear idea of how the change will benefit the program in the future. The ARP stakeholders will be provided with change resources such as online etiquette policy and standard operating procedures. These resources will help assist staff and faculty with adopting to the new radiology online course curriculum. And we'll maintain a standard of professionalism for an online platform. Standard operating procedures will help staff and faculty adjust to their new respective roles in the development of the online radiology course. It is also critical that those who will use the online software will are able to provide feedback on the product functionality. For this reason, 
we will facilitate focus groups throughout the implementation phases to solicit ongoing feedback about their experience with using the online platform. In terms of innovators and early adopters, we recommend that ARP leverages the enthusiasm of the champions for the new course by having them train the trainer. We also will establish a learning and development program to ensure that all adopters are equipped with the necessary skills for using the new hybrid course. Now, in regards to the early and late majority, for, for this group, we will provide a six-month data report that demonstrates the success of the program. We will also recommend that the course is promoted through all social media online platforms, including Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. Now, we recognize that there will be laggards throughout the implementation process and will continue and they will continue to resist the new RAPPATH course format. This group needs to see that the new hybrid course is truly the new normal and that it's something that they cannot avoid. We anticipate that our sustainability project will eventually persuade them to adopt to the new course format. This strategy will inspire these groups to commit to the new ARP hybrid course and will increase the likelihood that the blended course is implemented successfully. So now that I've given you an overview of our diffusion strategy, we are going to move on to the communication strategy. Thanks, Carla. Our communication strategy consists of six essential parts to ensure sufficient communication for each group. Stakeholder communications. These meetings are for the purpose of delegating responsibilities and to make sure that everyone is on track in meeting deadlines. Pre-launch communications. We'll create digital marketing advertisements via Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to inform the general public of our pre-launch. Program communications. It's comprised of training courses for instructors by information technology professionals on how to appropriately incorporate technology into their lessons. This will include rehearsals with faculty, staff, and instructor volunteers who may be available. Launch communications. These are promotion videos that will be displayed at the international society conferences, such as Radiologic Society of North America, to promote blending, blended learning environments to their base. Point of need communications. These are technical devices that we'll need to use to communicate during the lecture portion of the course. These items will be used by the speakers to share images and display messages to the class. In addition, we'll send out reminder emails to students that communicate the logistics of each course, such as text materials, time, place, and the name of their instructor. Pulsing communications. We'll utilize Aunt Mini, the largest, most comprehensive community website for medical imaging specialists worldwide. Graduates of the program will post testimonials about their experience and a discussion thread and hopes to encourage others to enroll. And lastly, we'll incorporate, incorporate SEO, search engine optimization, to inform radiology students of our program. And now I'll let Carla discuss change management communication roadmap. Thank you, Cho. Here's our recommended timeline for the ARP hybrid course implementation. So through, throughout the timeline, we plan to give two years prior to the launch and also provide six months after the launch to implement certain steps for the change. For the ARP leadership, we are recommending that there is active communication throughout the implementation process starting at two years prior to the launch of the online course. We also will provide uh, post communication and communication from 18 months to one year prior to the launch of the ARP hybrid course on an as needed basis. We are also expected to hire the instructional designer consultant 18 months prior to the launch 
and the instructional designer will work with the with an ARP staff person. And we will do we will implement this change until the launch of the online program. It's also important to note that the ARP faculty will determine the appropriate lectures for the online platform and also determine the appropriate lectures for the in-person portion of the hybrid course. And that will begin 18 months prior to the launch of the online platform. We will also encourage the ARP faculty to provide input and content for the online portion of the hybrid course. And we're also going to implement the Train the Trainer program six months prior to the launch of the course. Now, during the six months following the launch of the new course format, there will be a focus on real-time communication efforts, a determination of the impact, and an analysis of the user's experience. So now that I've given you an overview of our roadmap, I am going to turn it over to Cho, who's going to provide the sustainment strategy. Thanks, Carla. Communication will continue through the transition of the change. This communication will continue the socialization of the change for the whole organization and allow it to become part of the organizational structure. As mentioned, change metrics will continue to be used to track the effectiveness of blended learning transition. These metrics, metrics will track both organizational progress and individual progress to ensure that change is accepted and rewards and recognition can be accurately provided. Individuals who come up with particularly effective learning strategies will be rewarded and their teaching plans incorporated into the templates and examples used. As the change management shifts to sustainment, the ARRP faculty and course managers will ultimately be responsible for bringing volunteer lecturers up to speed on the new tech tools and training with ARRP staff and faculty on the learning tools used. Due to its off-the-shelf no nature, ARRP can also hire people with knowledge of the blended learning environment. Prior year examples and templates will continue to grow ARRP's knowledge data pool, which can then be used as an additional market stream. For example, pay-per-views of past view lectures for non-attendees. Finally, we'll all, with, while all opportunities will be made to transition ARRP faculty and staff, to the new learning environment, there will be a cutoff. Those who fail to meet performance standards will be let go to ensure the change isn't undermined. And now I'll let Carl discuss the final steps. Thank you, Churcho. To wrap up our course redesign change, we're asking the ACR board and ARP leadership to confirm the following conditions associated with the project are met. ARP course redesign outcomes meet the criteria of the project scope. The instructional design consultant is funded for 18 months and a plan to release any remaining change resources are, is in place. Team Heath Consulting will be responsible for the following. Confirm that the key issues identified were resolved and that a smooth transition of, program, of the program occurs from Heath Consulting staff to ARP leadership. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We're Team Heath Consulting. Please leave any questions on the discussion board and we'll be sure to answer them.